Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You know, I, I can just imagine Jesus saying, I will send you the spirit of the truth. And the disciples later on talking among themselves. So what is the spirit of truth and when will it come? And what happens when it gets here? When will the spirit of truth come? Well, you and I know that the spirit came to the disciples on the Sunday we celebrate as Pentecost. Last Sunday, remember everything was red, and at the first Pentecost, there was the sound of a rushing wind and tongues of flame as a fire appeared above the disciples' heads, and they spoke in languages that they didn't know. Well, in the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth has been coming ever since. It came to Cornelius, the Roman centurion, and his entire household, when Peter and some of the disciples went there at the direction of the Holy Spirit. It came to the jailer in Philippi that we read about in the book of Acts when Paul and Silas, who had been jailed for casting a demon out of a, a woman, when Paul and Silas were mysteriously freed from their shackles and all the prison doors were opened, he came to the Ethiopian and he got out of his chariot with Philip, and Philip baptized him in the water beside the road. And it came to you in your baptism. In the waters of your baptism, the Holy Spirit came. You were reborn, born again, as they say. And the Spirit continues to grow in you every time you hear the word of God, every time you're fed with the word of God at our table, or listening to a sermon or a teaching, from God's word, every time you witness a baptism, the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth, continues to grow in you, even now, and it will continue to grow as you leave this place this morning. It manifests even as you sit here, and it continues all through your lives. Born again, that's the key, born again. The Holy Spirit came to you in the waters of your baptism. Now, born again is one of those phrases that I really do like, and it really does have a lot of meaning, because as Jesus told Nicodemus, you must be born again. Well, we have been born again. That's a pretty neat phrase. But not all the phrases that you hear are so cool. There's one phrase, I have to admit, I really dislike hearing it from people. Now, I don't hear it from any of you. I don't hear it from people who are in church, but that's that one that goes, well, I'm spiritual, but not religious. That's just a phrase that seems to be a justification in somebody's mind as to why he or she or they don't attend church. This church, any church. It's one that I hear every now and then, and it seems to kind of give religion a bad name, doesn't it? Not that there aren't times, not that there haven't been times when religion doesn't deserve or does deserve a bad name. Think of pogroms and crusades and inquisitions and wars all started in the name of religion, not just Christianity, but all religions. So there are times, there are times when that bad name seems to be deserved. But as I thought about this more and more, I thought about religion and all the things, the good things, the wonderful things, God's work that is done in the name of religion by religious people. Hospitals started all around the country and all around the world by religious orders, by churches. You know, I grew up down in Austin in southern Minnesota, and the hospital there for years was called St. Olaf Hospital, started by people from St. Olaf Lutheran Church. Now they're affiliated with the Mayo Clinic. But that hospital, among many, many hospitals, started by a church, started by religious folks, started in the name of religion. Think of things like hospice, started again in the name of religion, by religious people. Think of things like homes that are being built by religious people, food, sh or food shelves, soup kitchens, shelters for those who don't have a place to stay, all done in the name of religion by religious people. The list goes on and on about all the good things, the wonderful things, the examples of God's work that are done. But I continued to think about this phrase, 
oh, I'm spiritual but not religious. I thought about it in relation to our gospel this morning. You know, for a lot of people, I think, when they say something like that, they have in mind that I'm spiritual, meaning that I'm of heavenly matters. I don't need the trappings of religion. I don't need the community or anything like that. I'm heavenly. That's where my mind is. Then I start thinking about that phrase that I haven't heard it for a while. They're so heavenly minded, they're of no earthly use. Well, I don't know too many people like that. At least, I kind of hope I don't. Not in this lifetime anyway. But I start thinking, continued in that vein of thought. Heaven, spiritual, and then, well, religion must be the trappings that happen here on earth. You know, the, the things that are bound to earth and, well, for some folks it seems like they're separated. You can be spiritual, but you want nothing to do with religion. But for you and I, they go hand in hand. You cannot separate them. Christ sends the Holy Spirit to us in our baptisms. Water, earthly water, is poured out on us. We're washed in water in our baptisms. That's a thing of earth. That's something that is tangible. But united with the Spirit, we are washed free of our sins. In the waters of our baptism, we die daily and rise daily, forgiven, saved. Water in the Spirit, Spirit in the water. Can't separate them. Not in this case. But it's an example that for you and I means that we are guided in our lives right here and now on earth, our earthly lives, our religious lives, we're guided by the Spirit, guided in the Spirit, living out our practice of life and our practice of religion together, all the time, hand in hand, inseparable. As I mentioned, last Sunday we celebrated Pentecost. This Sunday, today, we're celebrating Holy Trinity, Trinity Sunday. Now, we could ponder the mysteries of the Trinity, but after all our pondering, after all our thoughts, after all the examples that pastors like me like to use, you know, the Holy Spirit, God the Father, God the Son, like an egg or like a tree, after all that, the truth is, it's still a mystery. We really don't quite understand it. But there it is, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And instead of pondering the mystery of it or expounding on Trinitarian doctrine, which I know you were all really hoping that I would do this morning, I'm going to really try to relate the Trinity to what I've been talking about. Our second lesson, take a gander at it if you're not quite sure what I'm referring to, but it's bracketed by the Trinity. Peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, because God's love has been poured out to us through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, intertwined, inseparable, one God, three persons, three persons, one God. And all of it's reinforced by our gospel this morning. Jesus sending the spirit of truth, which glorifies Jesus, who glorifies the Father. And the spirit declares to you and to me what Jesus has from the Father, which is everything. The Spirit declares to us in and through our lives the crucifixion, the resurrection, salvation by grace through faith, declaring to us what Jesus says about loving God, loving neighbor, doing unto others as you and I would have done unto us, doing unto the least of his brothers and sisters, and in so doing, doing unto Jesus. Dying and rising daily in the waters of our baptism, Living into the truth, through the truth, through Jesus, through the spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit, living in imitation of Christ, living in imitation of Christ, giving ourselves even as he gave himself for us, acknowledging and rejoicing in how you and I, how for you and I, being religious and being spiritual, is the same thing. It's inseparable, intertwined into our living, living our lives as Jesus would have us live. And in so doing, 
celebrating and living the entire Trinity in our lives, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You know, when you hear somebody say, I'm, I'm spiritual but not religious, maybe the thing to do is with a gentle smile say, you know what, I'm spiritual and religious. Come with me to my church, and then come with me as we live our church when we leave. Amen. Thank you.